I'm reviewing books about learning Go, and today I'm reviewing this book, Learning Go Programming. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. I'm on a mission to find the best book to learn how to program in Go in 2023. I bought a whole bunch of books off of Amazon.com. I've gotten more suggestions for others, so I actually have nine or ten books now, up from my original six that I'm reviewing. I'm going through them one by one and trying to do an in-depth review so that you know which book you should buy. Today, this is the book, Learning Go Programming, Build Scalable Next-Gen Web Application Using Golang. I'm, I'm not going to say the author's name because I know I'd get it wrong. I believe she's from India. She at least worked in India according to uh, the acknowledgments in the book. Let's dive in and see if this is the book to read in 2023. So first, as always, who's the book intended for? Well, this book claims uh, that it is to help those who don't have any programming experience. Uh, however, uh, I'm, as I'm reading the book, I really do think you need some programming experience. Uh, I think at least uh, knowledge of one other programming language would be a prerequisite to, to really get the most out of this book. That's not to say you couldn't get anything, of course. If you're ambitious, uh, you can start anywhere. But uh, I, I think that kind of in theme with all the other books I've been reviewing, you probably want to have at least the basics down of one other language, whether that's JavaScript or Python or Java, or it doesn't really matter um, if you know the basics of programming. And that's just because the book doesn't really get into the very fundamentals of like, you know, what is a variable and uh, how does memory addressing work and, and what is memory? It, it doesn't really get into those details. So um, the book aims to be for anybody who even doesn't have programming experience, but I think you probably should have at least a little bit. Of course, having said that, this book is squarely aimed at those who have no experience with Go. So if you've never written a line of Go before, this book aims to help you. The prose in this book is written in a pretty conversational style, um, although it's, I, I might say, in a dialect that I'm not comfortable with. So the author, who's, as I said, from India, um, writes in a voice, a dialect maybe, um, that I, as, a, as an American, find a little bit unusual. Uh, I don't want to say it's r wrong per se, um, but, you know, just some of the, the phrasing is, is a little bit unusual to me. Um, if you are from India or that part of the world, or maybe you're just a, uh, English isn't your first language, you may not pick up on some of those subtleties that, that to me feel strange. So I, I don't want to call that a criticism, um, but it's something I've noticed. And if you are a native English speaker, it might bother you too. If you're not, probably less so. But just something to, to mention since I'm talking about the prose style of the book. Probably more important than that, though, this book is full of grammatical errors. In fact, the very first one is on the subtitle. <laughs> Build scalable next-gen web application using Golang. Uh, that should be applications. Or maybe build an application. I don't know. Uh, but it's it's grammatically incorrect. It's not serious. I still understand the intent. But it, it's wrong and it's distracting to me. In fact, as I was reading the very first page of the book, I found eight obvious grammatical errors on one page. <laughs> So uh, that's not great. I mean, the, the, the editor should have picked that out. So I'm, it's kind of embarrassing, I think, that the editor missed that. Um, I'm not going to harp on about that. Uh, just know it's full of grammatical errors. If that doesn't bother you, maybe, again, you're not a native English speaker, so you wouldn't notice as much, then maybe that's not a problem. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore, <laughs> uh, but just be aware. Uh, if that kind of thing bothers you, this book will probably drive you nuts. Aside from that, there's also some minor inconsistencies. Uh, the book kind of casually bounces between calling the language Go, Golang, the Go programming language, Go programming language without the in front of it, uh, whatever. Uh, if you're if you're hypersensitive to inconsistencies, it's, it might bother you. Otherwise, you probably won't really care. Let's talk about the organization in the book. I really like the organization in this book. Um, that's probably the best thing about it. Um, I find it exceptionally well organized, which means it would make for a great reference material. Uh, if you want to flip to the, the page of the chapter about a particular topic, this book makes that easy. The table of contents is, is well organized. Uh, it makes it really easy to find what you're, what you're looking for, con control structures, functions, strings. So I really like that aspect of the book. And the order of the content is I would say typical for what you'd expect for a beginner introductory, introductory uh, book. Um, you know, it starts with the sort of basics and builds up from there. Let me just give you a sense of, of the, the order here. Uh, so it starts, of course, with an introduction to Go, talks about setting up your environment, uh, and then getting started with Go, the structure of a program, keywords, identifiers, 
goes on to variables, data types, uh, and then it, it, later in the book, of course, it gets to the more complicated uh, things like structs and maps, concurrency, um, and then at the very end, building a web application. So the order makes good sense uh, for a beginner, um, and, and I, I like the organization of the book quite a bit. Each chapter begins with a sort of an introductory paragraph explaining and introducing the chapter with a mini outline of each chapter um, and, and then the, the learning objectives that you could hope to achieve by reading the chapter. So it makes it really easy to, to digest. If you're not sure if that chapter is going to help you, you can sort of jump to that chapter, read that, that little intro, and know if it's the right place for you right now to solve the problem you're working on. The content of this book, um, I would say, does an adequate job of covering most of the important topics for a new Go developer. Unfortunately, what it does not do an adequate job of is covering the topics of building a web application, <laughs> which which is unfortunate given the subtitle, that it's about building scalable next generation web applications. So the, the last section of the book is about building a web application, and that chapter is 38 pages long. 18 of those pages, or 47%, are an overview of basic web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, uh, I mean... I guess this book is meant for beginners of programming, so maybe that introduction makes sense, but it's it's not even about Go yet. So the first practically half of the section about the web applications is just about the web, which, which is fine, nothing wrong with that content, but it's not getting you very deep into the topic. And then it, it even talks about MySQL in there a little bit. So of those 38 pages in that chapter about web applications, only 20 are even about Go uh, or the Go aspect of writing web applications. So it's just not very in-depth. That's not to say it's wrong or bad. It's just not in depth. So you're not going to finish this book truly writing scalable web applications. You'll you'll have an introduction to the concept. And that's that's fine for what it is. It just doesn't quite live up to the promise of the subtitle. In contrast, some of the other topics are given maybe an inordinate amount of space. Uh, there's seven pages dedicated to walking the reader through the simple task of installing Go on Windows. It, it's mostly screenshots of going through the, the Windows installer. Um, I don't know. I, I guess, again, it's designed for uh, the absolute beginner to programming. Um, this seems more like the absolute beginner to using a computer. Um, if you don't know how to go through the install wizard in Windows, I'm not sure if you should be programming yet, but hey, whatever. That, that's what the book is. And then there's just a single paragraph that mentions installing on Mac OS and Linux, which is maybe that's fine if, that, if that's <laughs> easy for Mac OS and Linux users. Um, it's a little bit lopsided, though. I don't know. Take it for what it is. And then, of course, some of the usual suspects are missing from this book. Uh, the book doesn't talk about testing, uh, except for just a passing mention of it, that testing is easy. But it doesn't give examples of how it's easy or how to do it. It just mentions that it's easy. Um, and generics are missing, which you expect. The book is a little bit older than generics. So this book was published uh, January 2, 2021. So a, a year and a half before generics uh, came out. So that's understandable. Um, but in 2023, it is unfortunate because you probably want to learn generics if you're running Go. So overall, the content in this book is a reasonable introduction to Go, but it's not going to get you very far in depth, especially in the area of web application development. Let's move on. Let's talk about accuracy. If this had been the first book on my reading list, I probably would have been a little bit harsher uh, with regard to some of the accuracy complaints. Uh, but after having read the last book, Beginning Go Programming, uh, which is just full of accuracy errors. Maybe I'm a little bit more forgiving. I, my, my expectations have been lowered, perhaps. So in contrast, this book feels quite accurate uh, from a technical standpoint. However, there are some uh, inaccuracies or, or confusing things it says. Let me just offer a couple examples so you know what I'm talking about. On page 96, the book says, quote, an array is a set of similar type of elements, end quote. So I think that's just a confusing wording. Uh, technically, an array in Go is a set of identically typed elements. Um, I don't know what a similar type element would be, um, so, so I don't really know what it's trying to say there, but it, it's certainly confusing. Later on, when it's talking about slices, it says on page 106, Go provides the more powerful dynamically typed data type slices. And, and that's just wrong. Slices are not dynamically typed. Uh, nothing in Go is dynamically typed. Uh, Go is a statically typed language. So I'm not really sure the point that was trying to be made here, but it it's wrong. Um, it's not a big deal. I don't think anybody's going to read this and not know how to use slices. Uh, so just be aware. There are some inconsistencies and technically inaccurate or at least confusing statements throughout the book. So on the topic of sort of ambiguous or confusing things that aren't really wrong per se, uh, there's a section in the early part of the book where it's talking about, quote, jumping statements, as the book calls it. And it mentions break and continue. 
correctly, but it oddly doesn't mention GoTo, um, which is sort of archaic. You know, most people don't use GoTo for good reason. Uh, but then the weird thing is it puts os.exit in there, uh, which isn't a statement. It's actually a function call, um, and and it's part of the centered library. So I don't I don't know why it can why it lumps break and continue and os.exit in the same sort of category of things when they're really quite different. On a, in a similar vein, the unsafe.sizeof function in the standard library is listed in a table of operators. It's not an operator, it's a function. Um, and there's other things like that. So, you know, there, there's some confusing bits. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna ruin your reading experience. Physically, the book is of a nice quality. You can see it has nice white pages, black and white text. I don't recall having seen any graphics or icons in there, uh, which is perfectly fine. I don't feel like that's necessary in a book like this, other than the screenshots in the beginning about installing on Windows, and then there's a couple screenshots at the end in the section about building web applications that shows some, some web browser screenshots. Otherwise, no graphics in the book, and that's fine. The only complaint about the graphics is they're a little bit hard to read uh, just because of the way they're printed. Uh, sort of the, the dithering on the, on the black and white uh, makes them kind of blurry and fuzzy, but they're not really that essential to the content anyway, so not a big deal. So what are my concluding thoughts? You know, I really wanted to like this book. Uh, it's very well organized, and I can see a lot of thought went into the content. But the grammatical errors, uh, which I promised I wouldn't mention again, <laughs> sorry, uh, and just a lot of the inaccurate terminology are turnoffs for me. Um, so my conclusion is that there are better books out there. This isn't a terrible book. Uh, it's definitely not the best book, um, but it's definitely not the worst either. It's kind of solidly there in the middle, lower half, probably. Um, I would probably give it two stars on Amazon.com. I hope that's informative. I hope you've learned something. Be sure to hit the subscribe button uh, so you get the rest of the reviews as they come out soon. Maybe you have already read this book and you're missing the section on testing that I mentioned isn't there. I'm developing a course on testing in Go. It will, should be ready later in the first quarter of 2023. If you head over to boldlygo.tech slash courses, you can see some information. You can sign up to be notified as soon as that course is ready. I'd love to have you there. And of course, I'd just love to hear from you in general. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's a book you think I should be reviewing that isn't already on my list. And I'll hope to see you next time.